it automatically gets placed into their my drive in their gmail account and you don't control that two years later when they've left the business and the client wants to sue you you need those photos you need those files but they're nowhere to be seen because you don't have control of the account Do you need to pay for each of your 56 users or does Google offer a plan that allows you to have X amount of users for one flat monthly fee? Good question. Let's talk about Google plans. So each Google plan is built per user. There is no per company account that lets you have X number of users. But Google do have some pretty creative ways of doing billing especially with the different tiers of access. Now, there's two main kind of SKUs for businesses. You can either work with the business plans or you've got the enterprise plans. The business plans are designed for small to medium-sized businesses. And that's because the feature set there is really give me space in Google Drive, give me an email, give me the rest of the Google Docs ecosystem, but the fancy features like encryption, data loss prevention, any kind of enterprise level IT technology infrastructure management is going to be on the enterprise plans only. They basically want you to take advantage of those features so your business can be protected and that's effectively how they run it. Now, if you have some users in your business and they don't really need to use a fully fledged mailbox, they don't really need a full account, there are some ways where you can do what's called split billing. Now, in the past, you had to have at least 300 users in your company to activate something called split billing. Now, what Google would let you do is have a certain portion of your staff members on one SKU or one plan and another certain portion on another plan. Now the numbers have changed. Google have been a little bit more lenient. So I've heard from our sales team that smaller and smaller companies are getting access to split billing. There are some special cases. Google does have a SKU called archived user and it's available on some plans. And the archived user SKU allows you to have staff that have left your business have their data retained. And so if you have certain data retention protocols, you want to hold on to data for a certain period of time, rather than paying for a full mailbox and a full account suite for an active user, you can just pay to effectively keep the historical data of a user that is no longer part of your company. Now, personally, I don't use this method. In the small businesses that we work with, we archive accounts once permanently and then we delete the accounts once the archive data has been backed up. And we do that using our archiving and offboarding process. And what that means is a user leaves the business. The first step is obviously to change their password and suspend their account so they can no longer access it anymore. But the next step is to migrate their data into a central archive bucket. And that central archive bucket is the place where we put all of the data from all of the staff that have left our company. And it just fills up, it gets pretty big, but you know, as long as we're in the storage quota, we're going to be fine. And that one archive mailbox is then delegated so the right people inside the company have access if they ever need to search the mailbox. Now, we have a Business Plus plan on our main business, and that means that we get access to Google Vault. Google Vault is an e-discovery service, or well, that's the technical name for it, basically meaning that it allows you to have a consolidated search window, which lets you search every single email, every single file, right across the whole business, across multiple mailboxes. And so if you have staff leaving your business, you can have them archived into that archive bucket. And then inside that archive bucket, you can use something like Google Vault to search for all of the emails, or you could even use the delegated mailbox feature to just log into that account without a password, search for any emails that you may need access to and find them in that one big bucket of mail. And you don't have to bother with the split billing. Now, I know I've gone on a bit of a tangent here talking about buckets and archiving users. I hope in this answer, I've saved you some money anyway. If you've got users that don't really need full access to a Google account, maybe you could get away with just sharing resources to them and they use a free Gmail account. Now, as much as possible, I discourage this because if they are creating any data for your company, you really wanna have them as a named and licensed user. The reason for that is if someone's using a Gmail account and maybe you've shared some resources using the shared drives feature, or maybe you're really clever and you set up a security group and gave them access to resources via that security group. If they create a document inside their My Drive, they are the owner of that document. And someone who is the owner of that document means that you don't have control over that if they have a Gmail account and they're outside your business. So let's say you've got 10 staff and they're working out in the field and you're a bit tight and you don't wanna pay for licenses for all of them. Well, what happens when they take some photos of a job site and it automatically gets placed into their My Drive in their Gmail account and you don't control that? 
two years later when they've left the business and the client wants to sue you, you need those photos, you need those files, but they're nowhere to be seen because you don't have control of the account. My personal opinion is not to risk that. Just buy the bullet, pay for a license for every permanent employee in your business. The only time I would allow an exception to this is if you have contractors and they're temporary or they're coming and going often, or maybe they only need read-only access to resources. They don't actually need to create any documents or create any files. In that case, I would create a shared drive and just call it contractors. So you can be absolutely sure that anything you put in there is going out to people's Gmail addresses and it's going out to people outside your business. I would then create a security group and call that security group contractors. In that security group, I would then add the Gmail accounts of anyone I want to have accessing files. Thirdly, you might choose to use this for something like a Google site. If you want to share resources with someone, you may also choose to share this with someone who needs to have calendar events. So calendar events are a good way and they can be also shared with external parties as well. So try out those tips if you're managing the licensing in your business. I hope that's helped you think about things a bit differently. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.